With the small group that we've been having, I often not to take out the tables and all that. We're good. So our opening hymn is number 315. One five. Three one five. Lord Jesus, you always hear the cry of the poor 
Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are close to the brokenhearted, and you hear the prayer of the humble. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. So let us now offer the sign of peace. Please, John, you should have a safe trip. I know, don't worry. I need a hug, too. Peace. Don't worry. Put your cell phone in your house. Say that to you, too. Peace. 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 Graduate with these. I am. I'm used to it. Oh, you and you and Graham always can make people cry. I know. I think you didn't make me get stretched. <laughs> Let us pray. Kind and merciful Creator, we stand before you empty handed and we feel small and frail before you. Forgive us for the times we boast of the good that you gave us and the grace that you also gave us. Fill our poverty with your gifts. Fill us, keep us from looking down on any of our brothers and sisters. And give us grateful hearts for all that we have received from you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Readings up for grabs. I'll go first and last. <laughs> Camera. Yes, I like okay. The first reading is from the book of Sarah. For the most high is a judge who does not respect individuals or grant favors at the expense of the poor. God listens to the prayers of those who are exploited. God will never ignore the pleas of the orphan or the widow as they pour out their hearts. To be accepted, you must give yourself of the Most High it requires then your prayer will reach the clouds. The prayer of the humble pieces the cloud until it is heard there is no comfort for them. Yet they do not give up until the Most High answers them, giving the just what is theirs and granting them justice. The Word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Destroy remembrance of them from the earth. 
already being poured out like a libation. The time of my dissolution is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, a laurel wreath awaits me. On that day, our God, the just judge, will award it to me. And not only to me, but to all who have longed for the Christ's appearing. Christ stood by my side and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the nations might hear the gospel. That is how I was saved from the lion's jaws. Christ will continue to rescue me from all attempts to do me harm and will bring me safe to the higher realm. To Jesus Christ be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of God. Thanks be to God. of the nation. 
and yet Jesus praises the tax collector's prayer and criticizes the Pharisee's prayer. Through the centuries, the tax collector's simple prayer, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner, has been taken up as a complete summary of what Christian spirituality is all about. There are even cases of monks who made this prayer the only words they spoke and reached heights of sanctity because of it. This simple prayer makes a connection with God because it recognizes two things. The first thing it recognizes is that it acknowledges God's great quality in relation to fallen mankind, His mercy. Now, mercy comes from the Latin, misericord, which means wretched or miserable, and poor, which means heart. So it's a wretched heart, a special heart. Literally, it means to take someone else's wretchedness into one's heart. That's what God does with all of us. The second thing, the tax collector's prayer recognizes his need for that mercy. He accuses himself of being a sinner, someone who has selfishly abused God's gifts and used instead, you know, didn't love his neighbor. The Pharisee's prayer shows no knowledge of God his mercy, or, it, or the individual's need for God. Rather, it's an exercise in narcissism, in self-admiration. God wants to connect with us, but he can only do so if we let him. And we can't connect if we think we don't need him, like the Pharisee. We can tell that we are falling into the Pharisee's trap when we are over-concerned about being recognized for the good things we do. I'm going to tell you my story. Okay. St. Mary's Parish was located a couple of streets down from St. Martha's Parish. <coughs> Since they were so close together, the two youth groups of the parishes were often competing with each other which was not. They played sports against each other, they tried to outdo each other in the food drives, and they became rivals with about everything. Well, one Saturday, the youth minister at St. Mary's organized the kids into what he called disciple teams and challenged them to go out and serve others in the community. The theme for the activity was what would Jesus do? So here we go. St. Mary's youth group fanned out into the neighborhood and started serving. One team washed cars for free. Another team visited and, and performed for the residents of a convalescent home. At day's end, all the teams reported back at the parish. One team described how they had gone to serve an old widow who lived close to St. Martha's Parish. When St. Martha's Parish, the arrival was mentioned, the kids groaned. We mowed grass, we raked leaves, and did yard work for her, said one of the students. And after we finished, she invited us in for lemonade, and we even prayed the rosary together. And then she said to us, you young people from St. Martha's are always doing such nice things for us old folks. Oh no, said the youth minister. She thought that you were from St. Martha's? Well, I hope you said it straight and told her that you weren't from St. Martha's, but rather from St. Mary's. Well, no we didn't, said one of the kids. You told us to do what Jesus would do, didn't you? We decided that Jesus would just keep his mouth shut. What matters to a Christian is not being considered better than anyone else, 
as the Pharisee thought, by being close to Christ, as the tax collector discovered. It's remembering our need for God, not acting as if we can do just fine without Him. Today's Gospel is actually the second time that Luke says, whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. He really wants us to get that message. He repeats it twice in his Gospel. But it's not easy to get. The Pharisee in Jesus' parable thought he was doing great. Everyone else thought so too. He went to synagogue every Saturday. He said his prayers. He didn't do any big sins or scandalous stuff. He really thought he was on the track for a gold medal with God. But in fact, he wasn't. He was heading in the wrong direction. It's easy to be blinded by spiritual sins like arrogance and vanity. The tax collector's sins were more obvious, easier to recognize. He cheated and extorted any bribe. No sins you can see. But how can we recognize the sins we can't see? Christ's parable tells us exactly how. By looking at our thoughts about other people. Every person in the world is loved by God. Jesus died to offer salvation for everybody. His love and mercy has no limits. As Christians, we're called to do the same universal small c Catholic. Respect and love even for the people who get on our nerves. Let us down, or who make our lives miserable. That's tough. If we look into our hearts and discover that we don't have the universal respect, then we're nothing more than vindictive, self-righteous little twits. And if we look at our actions and discover that we play favorites, that we take pleasure in criticizing others, if we see that, oh, thanks be to God. Because then, if we see that this is what we're doing, then we know we haven't been blinded yet. And so we will be able to change and pray like the tax collector, aware of our needs for God's mercy and confident that His mercy will never run out. And dare I say, with this political election, this gospel goes very well. With I won't say who's who, but, <laughs> but it goes very well. Maybe they need reading this before November 8th. Okay, it's your turn. And then, you know, it's like the thing, well, I'm so humble, let me tell you how humble I am.
one of three families at the elementary school. Three Hispanic families in the elementary school are kids. But I mean, we heard the news, you know, that that that, that shooting or whatever, a fight or whatever, usually a Hispanic name came to them. My son's name, it, the first name is his dad's, and of course last name, and it's Louis Rivera. That is like Mary Smith here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So every time something would happen, you know, Louis Rivera would, Louis would look at me and say, wouldn't you give me another name? <laughs> <laughs>
and that she had lost two more in between. So, but here he came, you know. And, as it turns out, way smarter than me in, in many ways. So, yes, I was the older sister, and this is what you do and how you do it, because your little brother is learning, but he took flight really fast on his own, you know, his way. And so, in a way, he saved me or spared me. <laughs> of having this albatross sitting on me all the time that I have to be because he has excelled in many other things. I mean, we each have our strengths like everybody. And so I'm okay with letting him take the lead in many things. And others, I just stand by my thing. And, but I don't feel like I have to be, you know, the example set anymore. I have it for a long time. I didn't have your your experiences since I was an only child. Oh. But, but I the did have this. Are still there, no, I did have this. Uh, my my last name, as you know, is, is Porfirio. In Portuguese, it's Porfirio, and in Portuguese, it means perfect. So my father would say, "Live up to your name." In other words, you do everything perfect. So that was pressure. <laughs> you still had, no matter if you were the only child, the expectations were all on you. Uh, exactly, exactly. You know, so yeah. Then, uh, yeah. It's like <laughs> milagro, you know. It's like you were the miracle child. Yeah. Right? Oh, okay. And I, similar to you, I was not supposed to have been born. I was supposed to have been aborted because my mother back in the 50s had cancer mm -hmm. and she was declared sterile. <laughs> then all of a sudden, <laughs> <"Ta -da!" laughs> And so during the pregnancy, my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, uh, wanted me aborted because of those years, they didn't know, you know what they know today. And my father was like, no, absolutely not. You see? Look at that. You, you got the fruits of the life. <laughs> you know, so, uh, yeah, it, it, it's very interesting you know, when you think of stuff like that. Dennis, you've been very quiet. I'm taking it all in. So. Okay. Yeah. I'm a middle child, so like I said, I, oh, I get to hear left and right. I, I had to... They say that's not fun either. I, I had to live up, you know, to the yeah, was the firstborn, so-called common up. Uh, Favorite, and then I had the baby of the family, which you know, and of course I was the middle one, and I was more outspoken and out everything, you know. So that boy was looking at me. That's the middle kid, isn't it? It's Dennis the Menace, isn't it? Well, you have to get out from under the old and the baby. Yeah, exactly. You have You've got a double chore. Yeah. Uh, this, yeah, so mm -hmm. definitely attitudes, and you're better than this, and, and all of that. And it's crazy. Yeah. You know, it, it is for everybody, and I don't want to single out, but in the gay community, this gospel needs to be tattooed on every person. <laughs> because in the gay community, they are notorious for I'm better than you. Notorious. They scream about discrimination. Yet they discriminate beautifully in the community amongst each other. Because you don't have the right clothes, you don't look a certain way, you don't look like a GQ you model. Don't look you, enough, you, know, you know, I could go on for hours. I agree with them 100%. You know, it, it's terrible. Typically, appearance is very Oh, yeah. Gay. Yeah. And if you well, want to see, you want to see it, see it in action, women. you want to see it in, truly in action? November 12th, uh, down at Pride, you'll see it fully in action. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where you, you'll say hi to someone just being nice and it's like, hmm. Things to be little. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's one of the, the big negatives of the community is that. I told you that that piece of underwear comes from the feeling of the 
Exactly. Exactly. And you can come here some night and watch the intermingling of the world. <laughs> right? You've been it's here. interesting. Yeah, yeah. You've seen it. Well, I got to see it change dramatically. At, I went to a lot of the Pulse things. And it changed dramatically. Everybody was hugging. Everybody was in love with everybody. It wasn't any of this pride and stuff. I, at least I didn't see it. Anyway, I mean, yeah, because it was phenomenal was, because that was a tragedy. We were, we were dealing with the tragedy. That thing, like with my family, I've got my mother was one of twelve kids, and at no time did three of my uncles or aunts talk to another three. I mean, nobody talked to everybody except at the funerals. Mm -hmm. Then everybody was hugs and loves and mm -hmm. how's your kids doing and everything else. But come right back, it was it was you know. Oh, yeah. Wow, After they're, the they're, they're, they're yeah. they're yeah. bastards. They don't miss that. But it was a funeral, but I said, Paul, so I saw it changed it all. Yeah. I hope it did. In general, because it wasn't only within the gay community, but just in general, oh, true. acceptance of being gay and true. of the gay community. And that's where it that's where became all hoping, lives now. But, uh, right. That's where it became all lives that now. But unfortunately, but, it just lasted for a while because it's back mm -hmm. to the way mm -hmm. it was. Really? I kind of agree with you because I remember I came over here the, the Sunday you came back and did stuff and then Joel had his thing and I stopped by here and people were proud all over me being so nice, you know, some of these people that hang out here that I don't really know really well but I know who they are. And they seemed pretty nice for a while and then, you know, I came in a month or two later because I really don't go out that much. And, you know, one of this very person that was so, you know, humble and crying and everything was his same uppity self and wasn't really talking to me that much and I worried about it, but it was it was just humorous, you know, so you're right. Uh, yeah. And it's tough, don't get me wrong, it's not easy, but, you know, we've got to try. We have to try to break out of it. And if we see ourselves going that way, it's like, whoop, hold it, doo -doo -doo, backtrack. You know, but you've got to be able to see yourself doing it. I, was That's say, I, had, to, I had to get a gib slap mm -hmm. to find out that through my years and years of being in law enforcement, I actually handled the situation and took care of it and left. But the one part of me, and it was a big part I didn't know about, was empathy. They said it wasn't bred in me, it was being a cop. You go and you take care of the situation, stop a fight, and you go along. You don't say, how's the victim doing and everything. So that was one of the things that had to slap me in the back and say, you know what, if I want to live in civilian life as a being cop or something like that, I've got to get more empathetic. So, you know, I'm trying to deal with it, but, it, and, but you have to work at it. It's not one of those things, okay, I know it's empathy now, I've got it. No, I don't. I still have to every once in a while study my yourself. words and say, whoa, you don't want to say that, you want to say this. So I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a work in progress right now. This works. We all like that. I was going to say, when we that stops is when we're six feet under. Listen, it's definitely a work in progress. Well, thank you. Yeah, any more? I, I just wanted to say I love what the Dalai Lama said, which is that compassion and kindness is his religion. And that, when we have that, and find that in generosity, And it goes, doesn't it, when you think of it, doesn't it go back to the two commandments? Love God, love your neighbor. If you love your neighbor, you don't pull all, pull all this attitude stuff. It's hard sometimes. No kidding! Maybe there are people that you would like to... I know. I know. You know? And that you don't want to extend kind of this to. But that's when you're doing... That's when you're breaking the mold and being a true Christian. No, that's when you're tested. <laughs> you know, it's hard. And it's hard to teach it, especially the way our society is and what we see day to day and whatnot. You know, it's me, myself, and I, and I'll screw you if I can. I have to say, with this political whatever this is yeah. that we're having, <coughs> I have, and how 
how true it is, I'm not 100% sure. Democrats that, and there's commercials where they identify as being Democrats and now voting for a Republican or whatever, and vice versa, they're Republicans and now voting for a Democrat. I guess I have to give those people a ton of credit. I can, I do not see myself saying, I am this, but I'm going to go there. No. I would rather just say, I think if, if I had, like, the, there's this commercial that keeps coming back to me with this lady whose son is autistic. Yes. 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 When Trump, Trump teased him about she's it. A, she, yeah, she's a Republican. She says, but there was, I think, had I been that mall, definitely I wouldn't vote for him. I don't know that I could have jumped all the way to the other end and said I'm going to vote for her. To be honest. Well, then there's, a, there's one commercial, and I don't want to visit uh, the politics, but the, this commercial probably typifies the gospel today. It's a similar one that you said. And it is a Republican who is voting for Hillary. And she says it. But she also says in the commercial, I'm voting for her, yet I don't agree with all of her stands. Mm -hmm. That that was good. But because that, she wasn't that lady, she says that too, the lady with the yeah, autistic son. She wasn't, you know, like like the Pharisee, you know, that I'm better. No, it was like the like the the tax collector. You know, I don't like what this dude is doing, so I'm jumping over and voting for her, even though I don't agree with her. That's that's the tax collector. You know, voting that. So yeah, maybe indirectly, <laughs> the selection could be a wonderful gospel. <laughs> in action. It's a teaching exactly. moment if there is one. Indirectly, indirectly. <laughs> on, the same, on the same note, if people don't know, uh, early voting starts tomorrow. Yes. So oh, yeah. Johnny's going to be flying north with an I voted sticker on his chest. On the airplane. Because we're going to vote before you go Definitely. I'll be, I'll be doing the hashtag. Yeah. You follow Hillary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is this his first? I'll be trending oh, on that on no. Twitter. These phone before. It's just no, no. Election. Oh, no. Oh, no. We got. Uh, Debbie and I make sure that uh, he go. He's 29. He's been going for what? Over, or uh, eight, eight, nine years. <laughs> he's been voting since he's 21. We make sure he knows about stuff. I thought he was 21. Mm -hmm. No, no. I, I, I listen. Like, you know. So like I said, they have my right ears all open. Not his first rodeo. That's how nice. I see a lot of younger people now. You see, I know. They don't seem to really. Care one way or the other, and that's why I was kind of happy for my neighbor who was doing something, you know. Well, I know. You know. And, and even indirectly in the scripture, uh, Christ gave us his opinion of both. When you think of the gospel, render unto Caesar with Caesar's, and render unto God with God. So indirectly, he's saying, This is part of Caesar, if you will, so you need to vote. Do your, your thing for Caesar. But don't forget the God part you know, so, in making your decisions. It's interesting you said that yesterday because I went and there was a woman I met, an older woman, and she, you know, I said I was volunteering for the Democratic Party and who she supported me. And she said, Oh, honey, I, am a, I didn't know this general witnesses. They don't vote. I didn't, no. they, they I didn't know that. And, and I know, work for a number of years. And I said, People don't celebrate Halloween or believe in Halloween. That's so nasty. That's the best holiday ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. 
Yeah. I, I've, I've worked, actually worked with some people that didn't believe in Halloween. Or they think it's a holiday of the devil or something. Yeah, oh, it's okay. sinful. Yeah. I just think for Ooh. my youth, <laughs> you know, when you're a family of three girls, all you want to do is dress up. Yeah. We got to be like August in Virginia, and we would, it was hot, you know, we were thinking about our Halloween costume. <laughs> we were all going to be. Oh, that's good. That's good. I have not grown, I'm still the same. <laughs> Well, you, you can do that with Father Gordon next Sunday. Because it will be the day Sunday before, before you know, Halloween. Halloween. It will be interesting being in Las Vegas for Halloween. Trust me. <laughs> you will see costumes there. <laughs> it will be interesting. Uh, so let us continue then uh, by stating what we believe as a parish community. And as I was saying last week at the parish council <laughs> meeting, uh, there's a reason we have this where it is. I know. Here because of what it's covering. What it's under. <laughs> Those are all the, you will not, you will not, you will not. <laughs> Unless you follow the potty line. So, yeah, we're going to follow the potty line by saying, I promise, I promise to see, to see what is good for my sisters and brothers, brothers everywhere, rejecting injustice and inequality, and living with the freedom and responsibility of the child of God. I promise to work for the realization of God's vision of harmony and right relations among all peoples, rejecting the idols of money and property. I promise to seek peace and live in peace in one human family, rejecting prejudice in every form and all barriers to unity. I promise to cherish the universe and this precious planet, working creatively to renew and safeguard the elemental sacraments of air, earth, and water. I believe in God, the great spirit of creation, in Jesus, the simple servant of justice and love, who lived among us so that all might live with the abundant fullness. I believe in the breath of God's love, the spirit who continues the work of forgiveness and reconciliation, of birth and blessing, of challenge and hopefulness, so that together we can continue the work of creation. Amen. Let us pray to our parent in heaven, who hears the cries of the humble, and let us say, Lord, hear your people. For the church, that we, the people saved by God's love, that we may not rebuff and alienate anyone through superior attitudes, let us pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear your, your people. people. For those in the church to whom the ministry of reconciliation has been especially entrusted, that they may be uncompromising with evil, yet welcome those who made errors with respect and mercy. Let us pray. Lord, hear your people. For leaders of nations and public servants, that like God, they may be especially attentive to the poor and the marginalized. Let us pray. Lord, hear your people. For those who are rich in possessions and God-given talents, that they may not look down on the less privileged, but invest their wealth and potential in the growth of the country and all of its people, let us pray. Lord, hear your people. For each of us in this community, that we may realize how poor we are before God and one another, and be open to continuous renewal and conversion, let us pray. Lord, what other intentions do we bring before our parent today? Well, I'd uh, like to pray for my uh, friend Wanda, who's still in the hospital, but she did tell me that they found out her husband is cancer treatment. Free after all his treatments. Beautiful. Prayer of thanksgiving. 
things to to Lord or hear your people. For those that are sick, for Marion, whom I haven't seen, for Carol, who I went over yesterday and gave her communion, she is cancer free. But but uh, she has a tear in her colon. Oh. And so that's going to have to be dealt with, most likely surgery uh, for that. And uh, John, who couldn't be here this morning, uh, texted me this morning and said, uh, can you keep my mom calm and pers uh, persons in your prayers and ask uh, everyone to do the same? She is having a difficult time right now with five, I can't ever say this, fibromyalgia, and she's in a lot of pain. Uh, for all the sick and for Joel, who is still fighting that lovely mold, uh, and for all the folks we ask, 